this is, I guess, the fourth workshop in our series. I am Trondenheim, I lead the MIT Startup Exchange, which is an, a new service of the MIT Industrial Liaison Program. We have monthly workshops uh, trying to build uh, a new type of close connection between industry and startups and uh, the MIT environment. Today's topic is energy. We have a lot of exciting developments in energy, um, but it's not the only thing we do here. We have kind of tentatively divided uh, our uh, startup activities at, at the school in uh, seven different technology clusters. So today's workshop targets uh, energy companies. But as you know, when you make these divisions, a lot of the companies you know, float in between these definitions. So you'll find uh, companies that you know, will not appear under energy, but they are still here today. And, and there are uh, others that you know, may not fit so well for this topic. Um, our energy tech cluster, though, for the moment, contains around 82 startups, which is no small feat. And I'm sure there's a lot more. This is an initiative that we officially basically launched last Tuesday. So I think there's bound to be many, many startups uh, you know, in, the, in the woodworks and that we don't know about. So please let them know about us. I think we have an exciting service to provide. And I think uh, you know, this is a, a, a good venue. And uh, as you can see, many of them are very recent. Uh, they are very in stages from very, very early to much uh, later in growth stage. We try to cater to all of those. Um, it so happens that industry, and they will tell you today, is, are interested in startups from the early, early inception to obviously, you know, it becomes very interesting when it's in a growth stage. Here are some of the players represented today that we'll, you'll see later. I won't spend uh, a lot of time talking about them. Rather, I'll just make a pitch for some of the other clusters. We have a very large ICT cluster uh, around MIT, many, many startups. Many of them are also relevant to energy, so you should uh, perhaps think of taking a look at those. I do need to mention that this database that we have built is not accessible unless you are a member of the ILP or you are a startup yourself. So that's something to think about. Become a startup founder. The way you engage uh, with this program is um, as an industry member to become a member of, uh, of the MIT Industrial Liaison Program. The other way, as I said, is to be a startup yourself. You can then also access the network in, in every possible way. Uh, and then these events are open, so they are um, obviously very easy to come to. Here's a typical opportunity that we would post and, uh, I guess, market on behalf of an industry looking for a startup. So they would typically be large, larger companies that are members, you know, one billion revenue and, and, and above. And they're looking to connect with startups uh, around campus. They typically have some specific requirements. And then you as a startup can uh, apply to that opportunity and we will put you in touch. And if the company is interested, there will be a meeting. There might be an online introduction. There's all kinds of good things that could happen. So I, I mentioned we, we do a lot of things beyond energy. I just wanted to give you a little snapshot of the things. Uh, part of what we do, obviously, is to plug startups a little bit and, and show you, what, what, you know, the richness of this entrepreneurial ecosystem. Squeeze Biotech happens to be one of the very, very interesting examples. And you know that MIT professors collaborate all the time. This happens to be a collaboration between three different labs. And I'm told that what they were going to do was not at all what became this company. Just half a second on this company, they have developed this technology, which has a very marketable name of Squeeze, where you can basically, it's a delivery mechanism to a cell. And I'm not an expert on it, but anybody can see that is an uh, extremely hard pr procedure to, um, to deliver uh, any kind of um, organism into a membrane and get it into a cell. This has an enormous application, and it's a very, very exciting company. Dropwise, I believe uh, the founder should be here. Adam, I don't know if you are. There you are. So he might be able to explain better what this is. Here's my explanation. This also comes out of two MIT labs. Uh, and it tackles the very, very interesting and uh, prevalent problem that you would have in where any amount of uh, you know, liquid has to be squeezed through some you know, large tubes. You can think of utilities or infrastructure, water. You know, you wouldn't believe how much energy is wasted when you're trying to just push water or oil or what you have through large distances and through these, you know, large tubes. They have come up with a coding that has some answers, and Adam will tell us more about that later. Um, Noemitra, completely different area. Here we have um, a researcher who was 
I guess, so stressed that he decided I was gonna, you know, he was gonna solve this problem for himself to detect stress. In the, in the middle of figuring out how to produce this stress watch, stress uh, indicator, he started detecting stress levels. And the first interesting, and he, he has told this story actually in one of our venues here, he was so stressed and he measured so many stress signals that he shocked researchers over on the other side of the river who had been doing stress research for 30 years in the lab. You know, at MIT, the lab is the world. So he, of course, took 10 measurements every second. So on, on, on a plane, basically, to Pentagon to show off this watch, he got so stressed because the flight was, of course, delayed. So the signals that were registered were 100 times higher than were ever recorded on, on any stress test. Again, this is fantastic. This is MIT. This is where things happen. Last thing uh, I think I, have, I wanted to share with you, Jibo. This might be the first real personable robot that can actually give you social and emotional cues. You might think that's a fun thing to have you know, beside your cactus in the morning. But there are banks looking at this. There are people thinking, you know, this would be a friendly online banker for you. This, you know, there are so many applications when robotics gets very real and very human and very personal. And again, this is MIT. Ristify, very crazy idea, I would think. But so here's some students that thought, you know, the feeling of being cold isn't very real. We can send an anti-signal to the wrist so you don't feel cold. I am not to say that this is going to work. I'm not to say it's not going to work. But I'm saying it's very exciting. It's very MIT. Last, form labs, you think of 3D printing. But 3D printing used to be, and, and for some, uh, is still very, very expensive. Here they have a very inexpensive way to print. Uh, um, this is a, actually a speaker. They print 99% of this speaker on, an, on a 3D printer. Again, uh, the vision is to create 3D forms for uh, professionals, but at an affordable cost, again, transforming every other field. Luminoso, uh, this is a, one of our data science type startups, uh, giving power uh, for information. They were at the World Cup. They were analyzing Twitter feeds. They were able to detect signals in, uh, in Sony's and other companies' uh, customer base based on an enormous amount of what some people would call fairly meaningless uh, you know, utterings on Twitter. Again, MIT makes meaning out of chaos. This is our event. Um, we are going to start right away. I want to introduce uh, Carl Koster. He is head of the Industrial Liaison Program. Welcome, Carl, and please introduce um, the program. And I want to say to people who are still arriving, there's, you can go uh, towards the back here. There's some more chairs. I hope you can also find some chairs in the front. Welcome, Carl.